And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Our journey into end time prophecy continues. Israelites, I encourage you to look deeper into the words of the Most High. Don't be a surface level reader, as well as a terrible servant of the Most High. Don't allow religious doctrines to have the final say. Religious doctrines exist to conceal the truth. It's important for you to go beyond religious doctrines and theories. The synagogue of Satan know the moment you dig deeper into the scriptures, it will expose their falsehoods. That is why the high level workers of iniquity made sure to tell you not to read certain books and made you believe an everlasting covenant can expire. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. An everlasting covenant don't expire. In addition, the covenant consists of the Most High being a God to Abraham and his seed. Did the Most High give himself a time limit to be a God to Abraham and his seed? If he did, why is he trying to save his people until this day? Israelites, I hope you're starting to see why you must go deeper when it comes to the words of the Most High. It's also important for you to know the many promises the Most High made to his people. When you know the promises, Satan cannot deceive you with false promises. If Israelites in the awakening and out of the awakening, as well as the Gentiles, was aware of the many promises the Most High made to those who walk uprightly, the Satans would have a hard time convincing the people to follow him. The scripture said, eyes have not seen, nor has it entered into the hearts of the people of what the Most High is preparing for those who serve him in the spirit and in truth. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. If the people of the Most High was aware of the promises the Most High made to them, there wouldn't be a need for the Most High to expose the doctrines of devils from the beast religion. The doctrines of devils won't find a place in the hearts of the people. Satan had been promising many people salvation and eternal life in the heavens through religion for a very long time. Because the earth is in the hands of the wicked, the wicked made it difficult for the people to live in peace and harmony on earth. The words of the Most High said, when the wicked are in power, the people mourn. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. It's obvious that the righteous is not in power. That is why the people are not rejoicing. The earth is in the hands of the wicked. Therefore, the people are mourning. Most people want to escape the wickedness on this earth. Because of this, Satan's offer of spending eternity in heaven becomes appealing to a large population of people. That is why the Roman religion have over 3 billion believers. Everyone wants to go to heaven. Broad is the way that leads to destruction and many will be on the road to destruction. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. The coming kingdom of the Most High is not meant for many people, but for a few. That is why it's only a remnant. 
Satan managed to deceive the sheep into believing they would spend eternity in the heavens. If the Israelites and the Gentiles knew what the Most High was preparing for the righteous that serve him in the spirit and in truth, they would reject Satan's offers. If the people was truly following the examples of the word of God, the Messiah that came in the Father's name, they would have rejected Satan's offers just like he did. Because the world followed the Messiah that came in his own name, they are waiting to be raptured out of here to live in the heavens. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Only the Israelites and Gentiles that was led to the word of God by the Most High will be able to see through Satan's deceptions and rebuke Satan. Everyone who was led to the Messiah that came in his own name in religion, their eyes will be closed to the deception in the beast system in the beast religion. The God of this world have blinded the minds of many. Israelites, don't let the lust of the flesh deceive you. Everything here is temporary. Nothing is permanent. The promises made by Satan to live in the heavens by a rapture is a promise Satan cannot keep. The new earth will be right here. It's extremely important for you to know that we are not heavenly beings. The heavens is for the children of the heavens, the angels. Each heaven have its purpose. The first heaven consists of a great sea that is much larger than the body of waters here on the earth. The first heaven consists of the stars and the storehouses. It came to pass when Enoch had told his sons that the angels took him onto their wings and bore him up onto the first heaven and placed him on the clouds. And there I looked, and again I looked higher and saw the ether, and they placed me on the first heaven and showed me a very great sea, greater than the earthly sea. And here I looked down and saw the treasure houses of the snow and the angels who keep their terrible storehouses and the clouds whence they come out into which they go. They showed me the treasure houses of the dew like oil of the olive and the appearance of its form as of all the flowers of the earth. Further, many angels guarding the treasure houses of these things and how they are made to shut and open. They brought before my face the elders and rulers of the stellar orders and showed me 200 angels who rule the stars and their services to the heavens and fly with their wings and come around all those who sail. I don't know how humans could live in the first heaven. There's no land. As you have heard, the first heaven consists of a great sea. Where would you live? The second heaven is a prison for the fallen angels. The second heaven is in total darkness. The darkness in the second heaven is much darker than the darkness here on this earth. And those men took me and led me up onto the second heaven and showed me darkness, greater than earthly darkness. And there I saw prisoners hanging, watch, awaiting the great and boundless judgment. And these angels were dark looking, more than earthly darkness, and incessantly making weeping through all hours. And I said to the men who were with me, Wherefore are these incessantly tortured? They answered me, These are God's apostates, who obeyed not God's commands, but took counsel with their own will, and turned away with their prince, who also is fastened on the fifth heaven. And I felt great pity for them, and they saluted me and said to me, Men of God, pray for us to the Lord. And I answered to them, Who am I, a mortal man, that I should pray for angels? Who knoweth whither I go, or what will befall me, or who will pray for me? For those of you who doubt that some angels are bound, the authorized Bible confirmed the watchers that are bound in the valley of the earth. Enoch saw the prison that was made for the disobedient angels. And I saw a deep abyss with columns of heavenly fire, and among them I saw columns of fire fall, which were beyond measures alike towards the heights and towards the depth. And beyond that abyss I saw a place which had no firmament of the heaven above, 
and no firmly founded earth beneath it. There was no water upon it and no birds, but it was a waste and horrible place. I saw there seven stars like great burning mountains, and to me, when I inquired regarding them, the angel said, This place is the end of heaven and earth. This has become a prison for the stars and the hosts of heaven. Then I said, How fearful is the place and how terrible to look upon. Then Uriel answered me, one of the holy angels who was with me, and said unto me, Enoch, why hast thou such fear and fright? And I answered, Because of this fearful place, and because of the spectacle of the pain. And he said unto me, This place is the prison of the angels, and here they will be imprisoned forever. So far, the first and the second heavens are eliminated. The Messiah that came in his own name cannot rapture you into the first or the second heaven. The third heaven is where paradise is. Paradise is the Garden of Eden. The Most High kicked us out of paradise a long time ago. He even had angels guarding the Garden of Eden. And the cherub who guarded the garden was standing at the western gate and guarding it against Adam and Eve, lest they should suddenly come into the garden and the cherub turned around as if to put them to death, according to the commandment God had given him. Yet if thou hadst submitted, and had been obedient to me, and have kept my word, thou wouldest be with my angels in my garden. But when thou didst transgress and hearken to Satan, thou didst become his guest among his angels, that are full of wickedness. And thou camest to this earth, that bring forth to thee thorns and thistles. Then Adam said to Eve, Behold, our hope is now cut off, and so is our trust to enter the garden. We no longer belong to the inhabitants of the garden, but henceforth we are earthy and of the dust, and of the inhabitants of the earth. We shall not return to the garden until the day in which God has promised to save us and to bring us again into the garden as he promised us. To the people who don't believe the Garden of Eden is in the third heavens, Paul confirmed this to be true in the authorized Bible. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. After the children of Seth disobeyed God and went to mingle themselves with the children of Cain before the flood, the Most High said to our fathers that he would not let them stay on the holy mountain that was close to the Garden of Eden. Due to their transgression, the Most High was going to remove them away from the holy mountain in the garden and place them on a strange land. The Most High said that they would never see the holy mountain in the garden again. That is why the Garden of Eden is not on this earth. If the Garden of Eden was in this realm, the heathens would have tried to claim it for themselves. Many people would try to enter the garden. The Garden of Eden would have been a tourist hot spot. The Garden of Eden is not here, but in the third heaven. Then he called Enoch his eldest son and Methuselah Enoch's son and Lamech the son of Methuselah, and Noah the son of Lamech. And when they were come to him, he prayed over them and blessed them, and said to them, Ye are righteous, innocent sons. Go ye not down from this holy mountain, for behold, your children and your children's children have gone down from this holy mountain, and have estranged themselves from this holy mountain through their abominable lust and transgression of God's commandment. But I know through the power of God that he will not leave you on this holy mountain because your children have transgressed his commandment and that of our fathers, which we had received from them. But, O oh, my sons, God will take you to a strange land and ye never shall again return to behold with your eyes this garden and this holy mountain. As you can see, the third heaven is paradise. Both Paul and Enoch was allowed to see the garden. We cannot enter the Garden of Eden until the Most High removed the threatening sword against Adam. When he does this, Adam will be given the opportunity to eat from the tree of life so that the righteous who will inherit the garden can dwell there. 
And those men took me thence and led me up unto the third heaven and placed me there. And I looked downwards and sensed the produce of these places, such as has never been known for goodness. And I saw all the sweet flowering trees and beheld their fruits, which were sweet smelling and all the foods borne by them, bubbling with fragrant exhalation. And in the midst of the trees that of life and that place whereon the Lord rests, when he goes up into paradise, and this tree is of ineffable goodness and fragrance, and adorned more than every existing thing, and on all sides it is in form gold looking and vermilion and fire like and covers all, and it has produced from all fruits. Its roots is in the garden at the earth's end, and paradise is between corruptibility and incorruptibility. And two springs come out which send forth honey and milk, and their springs send forth oil and wine, and they separate into four parts and go round with quiet course and go down into the paradise of Eden between corruptibility and incorruptibility. And thence they go forth along the earth and have a revolution to their circle, even as other elements. And here there is no unfruitful tree and every place is blessed. Paradise is the place the Messiah said he went to prepare for you. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. This place, O Enoch, is prepared for the righteous, who endure all manner of offense from those that exasperate their souls who avert their eyes from iniquity and make righteous judgment and give bread to the hungering and cover the naked with clothing and raise up the fallen and help injured orphans and who walk without fault before the face of the Lord and serve him alone. And for them is prepared this place for eternal inheritance. The third heaven consists of paradise. I know some of you are thinking, if we're not heavenly beings, why is the Garden of Eden on the third heaven? We will go deeper into this when we go over the marriage between the Lamb and his bride. I don't want to skip steps. I want to review end time prophecy in the order that it will happen. The Messiah that came in his own name cannot rapture you into the third heaven. We cannot enter the garden until the time appointed to do so. The fourth heaven consists of the sun and the moon. Those men took me and led me up onto the fourth heaven and showed me all the successive goings and all the rays of the light of the sun and moon. And I measured their goings and compared their light and saw that the sun's light is greater than the moon's. The Messiah that came in his own name cannot rapture you into the fourth heaven. There's no place for you to dwell there. The fifth heaven consists of another prison for the Gregories. The Gregories are soldiers, the watchers, according to the book of Enoch. The leaders of the fallen angels are in the fifth heaven as well. The men took me on to the fifth heaven and placed me, and there I saw many and countless soldiers, called Gregories, of human appearance, and their size was greater than that of great giants, and their faces withered, and the silence of their mouths perpetual, and there was no service on the fifth heaven. And I said to the men who were with me, Wherefore are these very withered, and their faces melancholy, and their mouths silent? And wherefore is there no service on this heaven? And they said to me, These are the Gregory, who with their prince Sitanel rejected the Lord of light. And after them are those who are held in great darkness on the second heaven. And three of them went down onto earth from the Lord's throne to the place Ermon and broke through their vows on the shoulder of the hill Ermon and saw the daughters of men, how good they are, and took to themselves wives and befouled the earth with their deeds, who in all times of their age made lawlessness and mixing and giants are born and marvelous big men and great enmity. And therefore God judged them with great judgment, and they weep for their brethren, and they will be punished on the Lord's great day. As you can see, the Satans are in the fifth heaven. The Messiah that came in his own name cannot rapture you into the fifth heaven. 
The false Messiah is not rapturing you. He's capturing his prey that will join him in the lake of fire, the second death. So far, heavens one through five are eliminated. I don't know how you can dwell in the heavens to wait out the great tribulation when the Most High don't have a place to put you. Heavens one through five are occupied and each heaven serve its purpose. The sixth heaven consists of the archangels. We are not archangels. How can we dwell in the sixth heaven? And thence those men took me and bore me up unto the sixth heaven. And there I saw seven bands of angels, very bright and very glorious, and their faces shining more than the sun's shining and glistening. And there is no difference in their faces or behavior or manner of dress. And these make the orders and learn the going of the stars and the alteration of the moon or revolution of the sun and the good government of the world. And when they see evil doing, they make commandments and instructions and sweet and loud singing and all songs of praise. These are the archangels who are above angels. Measure all life in heaven and on earth and the angels who are appointed over seasons and years, the angels who are over rivers and sea, and who are over the fruits of the earth, and the angels who are over every grass, giving food to all, to every living thing, and the angels who write all the souls of men and all their deeds, and their lives before the Lord's face. In their midst are six phoenixes and six cherubim, and six six winged ones continually with one voice singing one voice and it is not possible to describe their singing and they rejoice before the Lord at his footstool. The Messiah that came in his own name cannot put you in the sixth heaven to wait out the great tribulation. The seventh heaven consists of high level archangels and other high level angels. Remember the angelic realm has a hierarchy system. Just like there's a hierarchy in our households. The seventh heaven is for the high level angels. The seventh heaven is as far as the holy angels that was with Enoch could go. The angels worship the most high who is in the tenth heaven at his footstool. And those two men lift me up thence unto the seventh heaven. And I saw there a very great light and fiery troops of great archangels and corporeal forces and dominions orders and governments, cherubim and seraphim, thrones and many-eyed ones, nine regiments, the ionic stations of light, and I became afraid and began to tremble with great terror. And those men took me and led me after them and said to me, Have courage, Enoch, do not fear, and showed me the Lord from afar, sitting on his very high throne. For what is there on the tenth heaven, since the Lord dwells here? On the tenth heaven is God. In the Hebrew tongue, he is called Aravat. And all the heavenly troops would come and stand on the ten steps according to their rank, and would bow down to the Lord, and would again go to their places in joy and felicity, singing songs in the boundless light with small and tender voices, gloriously serving him. Israelites. The seventh heaven is also eliminated. The Messiah that came in his own name cannot rapture you into the seventh heaven. The angels who was with Enoch said to him, this is as far as they could go. Only the angels that sit at the presence of the most high could pass the seventh heaven. The angel Gabriel was the one that took Enoch into the eighth and ninth heaven. According to the book of Enoch, the eighth and ninth heaven consists of the zodiac signs. And I saw the eighth heaven, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Muzaloth, changer of the seasons, of drought, and of wet, and of the twelve signs of the zodiac, which are above the seven heaven. And I saw the ninth heaven, which is called in Hebrew, Hushavim, where are the heavenly homes of the twelve signs of the zodiac. Israelites, I hope you're just as curious as I am unto where the Messiah that came in his own name will put the people he raptured into the heavens. Heavens one through nine are occupied by the children of the heavens, the angels. The Messiah that came in his own name can't place you in the heavens to wait out the great tribulation and the day of the Lord. Israelites, 
Now do you see why the synagogue of Satan banned the book of Enoch and discouraged you from reading the book of Enoch? If any of you want to know the truth, the Holy Spirit will lead you to many books the heathens slander and told you was not the words of the Most High. This is why it's important for you to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Israelites, this is why you must go deeper. If your religious leaders are telling you Jesus will rapture you into the heavens before the great tribulation, you need to ask him or her which heaven. Tell them Sister V from Open Diary showed you that all 10 heavens are occupied. Israelites, you need to ask questions. This is your life in eternity. Don't play with where you will spend eternity. Don't take the high level workers of iniquity words as truth. They hide behind their falsehoods and take refuge in their lies. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. If you dig deep, you will soon realize that their doctrines is not valid, it's not solid, it's not true at all. Only the Holy Spirit can open your eyes to the deep things of the Most High. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Israelites, don't reject end time truth. Confirm everything with the Holy Spirit. The 10th heaven is where the Most High is, as you heard earlier in the scriptures. Enoch was given the opportunity to stand in the presence of the Most High. On the 10th heaven, Aravath, I saw the appearance of the Lord's face, like iron made to glow in fire, and brought out emitting sparks, and it burns. Thus I saw the Lord's face, but the Lord's face is ineffable, marvelous and very awful and very very terrible the lower ranking angels gave enoch a tour of the heavens the lower ranking angels took enoch from the first heaven up until the seventh heaven they couldn't go past the seventh heaven the angel gabriel is the holy angel that gave enoch a tour of the eighth and ninth heaven by the way the holy angel gabriel is second in the rankings of the angels When it came time for Enoch to enter the 10th heaven to be in the presence of the Most High, it was the holy angel Michael that took Enoch into the presence of the Most High. And I fell prone and bowed down to the Lord. And the Lord with his lips said to me, Have courage, Enoch, do not fear. Arise and stand before my face into eternity. And the archistratage Michael lift me up and led me to before the Lord's face. Michael is the highest ranking angel. He's the commander of the angels. He is the word of God. Michael is Joshua ben Joseph when he was made flesh. He's the true Messiah that came in the father's name. Michael is the same angel that took Levi, the son of Jacob, and the progenitor of the tribe of Levi into the presence of the most high. Michael is the angel of his presence, just as Judah called himself the angel of his presence in the testament of Judah. Michael is the angel that possessed the keys to open the gates of heaven. He has the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Just as it's written in the authorized Bible that the Messiah has the keys to the kingdom of heaven. He offered to give the keys to Peter. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The angel takes Baruch to the next heaven, identify as the fifth heaven, where Baruch faces the closed gate upon which the names of men are inscribed. The gate opens only to admit the commander-in-chief, Michael, the key holder of the kingdom, descending from behind it with a great sound to receive the prayers of men. 
He holds a cosmically sized bowl into which the virtues of men enter in order to be brought in it to God. Israelites, the time have come for you to know the complete truth. Stop following the Messiah that came in his own name. Israelites, it's very important for you to understand that when it comes to the Most High, he's everywhere. Despite the scriptures in the book of Enoch saying he dwells in the 10th heaven, the heavens and the earth cannot contain the Most High. There's not a place where the Most High cannot be. He's literally everywhere, even in you and me. That is why we are the temple that house his spirit. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. But who is able to build him an house, seeing uh, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain him? Who am I then that I should build him an house, save only to burn sacrifice before him? But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have builded. The most high is beyond what you and I could ever imagine or think of. Now that you know who occupy the heavens and their purpose, where will the Messiah that came in his own name put the people he raptured away before the great tribulation? How do you die and go to heaven? Which heaven are you going to? Israelites, do you see how the truth destroyed the doctrines of devils taught to you by the workers of iniquity in religion? We have people who don't allow the Holy Spirit to guide them into all truth repeating the same doctrines of devils to the sheep, further destroying the people. The time have come for you to go deep. When Adam and Eve was making their petition known to the Most High, they asked the Most High if there's another place he could put them to rest. The Most High said to Adam, there was nowhere to put them. Only the heavens and the Most High said to Adam, he couldn't go there. O Adam, as to what thou sayest, Bring me into a land where there is rest. It is not another land than this, but it is the kingdom of heaven where alone there is rest. But thou cannot make thy entrance into it at present, but only after thy judgment is passed and fulfilled. Then will I make thee go up into the kingdom of heaven, thee and thy righteous seed, and I will give thee and them the rest thou ask for at present. As you heard, the Most High don't have anywhere to put Adam and Eve except paradise, which is the third heaven that consists the Garden of Eden. The Most High said he couldn't enter the garden until the judgment against him expired. I don't know how the Messiah that came in his own name will give all the people that accept his offer a place to rest in the heavens when the Most High couldn't give Adam and Eve a place to rest in the heavens. Most of the heathens' depiction of eternity is in the Garden of Eden. The workers of iniquity portray eternity in the Garden of Eden by the images they made available to the public, while Satan promised you eternity in the heavens. Israelites, ask the Most High to give you eyes to see and ears to hear. A lot is hiding in plain sight. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Israelites, just because religious doctrines sound good, it doesn't mean that doctrines is of the Most High. As the indigenous people of the world, if we truly dissect the promises the God of Christianity made, have any of us benefited from those promises? The other species of mankind are benefiting while the indigenous black people live in poverty all over the world. It doesn't matter in what part of this world, the indigenous black people are at the bottom. The continent of Africa belongs to the indigenous black people. Matter of fact, every single land on this earth belongs to the indigenous black people, but I will focus on the continent of Africa. The other species of mankind benefit from the resources from the continent of Africa. The nations are made rich with Africa's natural resources, while the same natural resources that made the Gentile nations rich don't have the same value in African countries. 
the Roman God said, if you accept him as your Lord and Savior, he would provide for you. Where's the provision? Many of you trade your glory for the offers of an idol God that can't do anything for you. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Israelites, let the truth do the necessary work in you. The truth must do its work in order to transform your mind. The Most High send the gospel of truth into the world to expose the lies. Allow the truth to do its work. Last week, you learned that in the little season, Satan would be given the opportunity to deceive the nations again. By the way, someone said to me that we are in the little season right now. Israelites, be very careful. Although the truth have come into the world, there's a lot of false prophets and teachers doing the work of Satan. Beware of them. I don't know how we are in the little season and we are not dwelling safely in the promised land. The great army Gog and Magog will come upon the Israelites and the righteous while they are in the promised land. During the little season, we will be in our land. Israelites, the Messiah said, don't let anyone deceive you. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Some people believe they are doing the will of the Most High, but they are doing the will of Satan. They put out false information to appear wise, also to go viral. I don't know how people play with their life like that. Israelites, allow the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth. All you have to do is go deeper and you will find the truth. The scripture said in the book of Revelation that the rest of the dead will not live again until the millennial reign is finished. That was the first resurrection. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. After the millennial reign, the dead will live. During the first resurrection, not all people rise. The scriptures let us know that the just and unjust will hear the voice of the Messiah and will rise. Some would rise to glory while some rise to shame. The book of Enoch let us know that there are some people that will not rise in the first resurrection. The hallowed places was created to receive the spirit of all men. They would remain in the hallowed places until the time appointed for them to be judged. Then Raphael answered one of the holy angels who was with me and said unto me, These hallowed places have been created for this very purpose that the spirits of the souls of the dead should assemble therein. Ye that all the souls of the children of men shall assemble here, and these places have been made to receive them till the day of their judgment, and till their appointed period, till the period appointed, till the great judgment comes upon them. At the Messiah's judgment seat, the righteous and some sinners rise to receive their rewards according to their works. That was the first resurrection. In the book of Enoch, the angel Raphael let us know that there was a section in the hallowed places reserved for sinners who was in complete disobedience. The scriptures in the book of Enoch let us know that these people would not rise. Such has been made for the spirits of men who were not righteous, but sinners, who were completely in transgression and of the transgressors. They shall be companions. But their spirits shall not be slain in the day of judgment, nor shall they be raised from thence. There are some people that didn't rise in the first resurrection. Their spirit remained in the hallowed places until the final judgment. At the end of the battle of Armageddon, at the great white throne of judgment, John saw in a vision the dead standing before the Most High, very similar to the Messiah's judgment seat. However, in the great white throne, multiple books was open. For those of you who are not aware, everything about you is recorded. The scriptures in the authorized Bible inform us that we have to give an account to our every words. The book of Enoch let us know that every soul that is predestined to eternity are prepared before the formation of the world. This information is recorded in a book. The archangels that are in the sixth heaven also record the deeds of mankind as well. And Proville told me all the things that I have told thee, we have written, sit and write all the souls of mankind. However, many of them are born and the places prepared for them to eternity. For all souls are prepared to eternity before the formation of the world. These are the archangels who are above angels. 
measure all life in heaven and on earth and the angels who are appointed over seasons and years, the angels who are over rivers and sea and who are over the fruits of the earth and the angels who are over every grass giving food to all, to every living thing and the angels who write all the souls of men and all their deeds and their lives before the Lord's face in their midst are six phoenixes and six cherubim and six six winged ones continually with one voice singing one voice and it is not possible to describe their singing and they rejoice before the lord at his footstool everything about you is recorded that is why you will be judged according to what is written about you in the books according to your works the book of Revelation in the authorized Bible let us know the dead was judged based on what was recorded in those books about them as well as their works. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. In the Messiah's judgment seat at the first resurrection, if your name was not written in the book of life, you didn't rise. In addition, Michael would deliver everyone whose name is written in the book after the great tribulation. At the second death, did you notice in the scriptures, the dead was judged according to what is written about them in the books. Also, their names had to be written in the book of life. At the great white throne judgment, multiple books were open. It's all about what is written about you in those books. In addition to your name being written in the book of life, the dead that will rise at the final judgment, the great white throne will hear everything they have done. The great white throne judgment is for the dead that didn't rise in the first resurrection. These people are who the scripture said they would rise to judgment. Remember, the scripture said it is appointed for man to die only once after that to judgment. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. The scriptures did not mention the righteous standing before the great white throne of the Most High. The reason the righteous is not there, the righteous is not dead. They are living. In addition, the righteous overcame the second death. That is why they will not stand before the great white throne of the most high. The scripture said the people that rise in the first resurrection was blessed and the second death had no power over them. Israelites, it's important that you understand the Messiah didn't die to overcome death just for you to die again during the millennial reign. One of the Messiah's main purpose of becoming flesh was to overcome the power death had over us. When the Messiah raised you up at the last day, death no longer have control over you. We will change. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. But this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. The scripture in the book of Revelation said, blessed are the people who participate in the first resurrection because the second death have no power over them. As you heard in the scripture, we shall change to put on immortality. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Our human body is flesh and blood. That is why we will change. The second death is reserved for the sinners. The scriptures in the book of Revelation let us know all the people that will partake in the second death. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The unbelieving, the murderers, 
the sorcerers, the idolaters, and the liars will be partakers in the second death, which is the lake of fire and brimstone. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. As you can see, the second death is reserved for the dead and all the people who didn't rise in the first resurrection. These are the people who will wake up to judgment. The righteous was already judged and received their rewards at the Messiah's judgment seat. The Messiah promised to raise his people up at the last day. The first resurrection is the Messiah fulfilling the promise. The righteous will not participate in the great white throne judgment. All the sinners that gathered to form the great army, Gog and Magog, to fight against the Israelites and all the righteous, they are the people that will participate in the second death. The sinners that will reap what they sow during the millennial reign, they will be partakers in the great white throne of the most high final judgment. The scripture said the sea will give up its dead. Hell will give up its dead. Everywhere the dead is, they will come to the great white throne to be judged. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. The book of Enoch also confirmed everywhere the dead is, they will rise and be gathered before the great white throne, the final judgment. And in those days shall the earth also give back that which has been entrusted to it. And Sheol also shall give back that which it has received. And hell shall give back that which it owes. The second death is the lake of fire. The lake of fire and brimstone is reserved for the Satans and all the sinners that did the will of Satan. The righteous will not participate in the second death. That is why they will reign with the Messiah for a thousand years. They will be like the angels. After the great white throne judgment, the righteous will inherit paradise. The sinners will inherit their eternity, the lake of fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The scripture said everyone whose name was not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The final resting place for all sinners is the lake of fire. That is where they will spend eternity with the Satans they followed during their lifetime and never repented. The lake of fire and brimstone is not where you want to spend eternity. We all should achieve to spend eternity in paradise, the garden of Eden. That is where the righteous would dwell forever. Satan promised to rapture you before the tribulation to take you to heaven is the cover up. Satan wants to rapture you to the lake of fire to suffer just as he will. Israelites, it's really important for you to establish a personal relationship with the Most High to overcome the deception in the beast system. While we were sleeping, Satan managed to deceive us with religion. Now that the Most High have awakened us out of our slumber, we have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The second death is the final judgment on mankind and all creation. The Most High will reconcile everything back to himself. The righteous will inherit paradise while the sinners inherit the lake of fire. The great white throne is the final judgment day. Israelites, you don't want to be a part of the second death. Make sure to live a life that pleases the Most High. All of us, should strive to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Israelites and Gentiles everywhere, don't allow the Satans to deceive you with false doctrines. If you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth, the Satans can't deceive you with their falsehoods. Religion is not the road that leads to life. You must look within. The time have come for you to return to the Father. Israelites and Gentiles, make sure your works allow you to be among the few that will inherit the coming kingdom. The Most High's kingdom is made for a few. That is why there's only a remnant. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many down to the glory of God, for which cause we thank not. 
But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory.